Welcome to another episode of the Do Business, Do Life podcast. I'm here with my friends Jim and Jamie Shields, live from Costa Rica. So welcome, y'all. Thanks for carving out some time on your adventure to uh, have a conversation. Oh, thanks for having us, Brad. Yeah, thank you so much. And with you uh, saying welcome, y'all, it immediately, I said y'all earlier today, and I thought, I wonder if they have any idea what I'm talking about around here. I <laughs> say y'all, because that is a word I love to use a lot. Yeah. It's a, it's like a, it's a warm version. Uh, I've got relatives in Texas, of course, you know, y'all's like every third word down there. And I feel like it's slowly worked its way up through Oklahoma and Kansas a bit. Is that, is that a Florida thing? Is that a Florida thing? Oh, or? Yeah, Southern hospitality. For and sure. I'm a big yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Kind of thing. Like even the young teenagers at like a movie theater. Yes, ma'am. It's just such a habit. Yeah. Words matter. And it, yeah. it's it's crazy how one little word can make all the difference in a sentence. So with, with that, I've been looking forward to to this conversation for a long time. Um, had the pleasure, Jim. Obviously, you were you were on my previous show, and the family board meeting, uh, the book. So for those that don't know, Jim and Jamie Shields, you're in for a treat today. This is not cliche. Um, their teachings have made a massive impact on my life, my wife's life in my relationship with my children, each of our three kiddos. And I, I feel very fortunate. I think, I think our oldest was maybe four or five when I first stumbled along the concept of the family board meeting and thank God I did. Cause I, I, it'd be like one of those deals where you look back when they're 18 and leaving the house where you just be like, ah, where was this nugget of wisdom that I wish I would have had, you know, a decade ago. So Jim, thank you, Jamie. Uh, you, uh, it was it was awesome to have both of you presenting uh, out at our founders retreat in South Carolina, and then you kind of took it up a notch, and we talked about kind of the perfect date night with the question. And Sarah and I were both there with, I think it was twenty five, thirty other couples in the triad community, and that was a magical evening as well with some great food, some great conversation, a little bit of great wine. And so I just want to say thanks for all you've contributed to me personally, also to the community at Triad. And I just love to surround myself with people that just live life very intentionally. And that that's how you show up. So I'm excited to dive in today. Um, I don't know if we just want to kick it off and dive right into the board meeting if, or if there's any other thoughts on your all's side with just you're living life in Costa Rica, you're, you're hanging with the family, you're kind of practicing what you preach. So I guess what, what's new and fun in the Shields world? Well, first, thank you for, for that, because we did have a wonderful time with you and Triad when we were in uh, South Carolina, right? Sure. That was a lot of fun. And, and I'll tell you, we reference that night quite often because there's always breakthroughs at date night with a question, or there's always breakthroughs when Jim speaks, it, because we speak about things that matter and about things that are so deeply connected to our own hearts. I think it's hard to not connect naturally with somebody else's heart. It's just who we are, I think, as being vulnerable. And there was a, a couple there that night that we often refer back to, like, because it touches us back. You know, it's like this full circle of mm-hmm. we should to help and to share. And it does that. And then when others share with us the way you, you know, have been sharing with us, I think, gosh, it makes it so beautiful to like walk along the path with these people. And so thank you for having us at your event and allowing us into the space with these people to, to help make a difference because it, it really does further feed us to do more of what we do. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. I've experienced that obviously coaching financial advisors over the years, but it's a beautiful thing not only to share the coaching and the frameworks and the thought processes, but then to see them actually play out in action. Mm-hmm. And I know you all have been in a number of groups, mastermind talks with Jason Gaynard, where you've had like uh, front row dads with John Broman, which was where we first connected Jim. And just to see like the iterations, like we just said, I've got a teenager in the house. He's 13 now. And mm-hmm. seeing the rhythms of a family board meeting and what that has personally done for our relationship and the incredible memories that's created. I have to just believe that's incredibly rewarding on your all side where you can take some of the stuff that's worked for your own family and like put it out into the world. So it benefits others. And what's really cool is even, um, sorry, I keep cutting you off. I'm just excited to be here with you. So, um, and because you might not say this about yourself, but actually on Jim's phone, he goes in anytime somebody tags 
us or the family board meeting and shares like pictures of their children like you've done for years. So I feel like we've grown up watching your children grow up. And so like all of the, every time somebody posts one of these amazing pictures with their child, like thanks Jim Shield. And it tells about the wonderful day or the breakthroughs or whatever. Jim has all of those screenshotted in, in a folder on his mm. phone. And, and I know that he goes back to them and it's just such a reward and a gift. It's, it's kind of like watching our own children grow up, you know, we're like our grandchildren yeah. grow up as weird as that sounds. It's like, wow, our friends are out there doing amazing things with their children because we stumbled upon something that worked well. Yeah. Yeah. I think you thought it was going to be too simple. I've always told you that. I mean, I'm like, I just, we didn't think this was even book worthy. It, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, I didn't, I think, didn't think it was necessarily talk worthy even. And, uh, you know, and you get those nudges and then you get the results and, that's been pretty humbling for sure. You know, people like you and so many others, but it's like, gosh, this one simple little concept with powerful principles around it, you know, lasts the span of a decade plus now. And it seems like it's picking up speed, not losing speed, which is really exciting. Yeah. I, and I would love to, because there's probably some listening in uh, that are like, what's the family board meeting? Like, please, <laughs> like what's the, the suspense is building here. Uh, but what what's the quote? Um, necessity is the catalyst of invention. I'm I've just butchered that. But basically, this was born of you all needing a solution to like a real world family issue that was going on for for yourselves. And that what what I love, Jim. The first time I heard you share that, it is a very authentic, vulnerable. Uh, place that you went you said hey like we were in a tough spot and we had to battle through some stuff and we kind of stumbled across this family board meeting and it it made all the difference in the world so if you wouldn't mind I would just love that story in your own words and I think that will take us right down the path of what is the family board meeting yeah so gosh this we're going back 12 years now 12 13 years now and you know Jamie and I when we met we fell in love pretty instantly as one of those things that you hear about, but it, it was quick. But um, when I was falling in love with her, you know, I was having two young boys to come with. Jamie was divorced with full custody of two beautiful little boys, you know, had gone through difficult times and come through it. And, you know, here are these, this little seven-year-old and five-year-old vibing for a father figure I'm running two real estate businesses just coming out of near extinction from 08. And I don't want to mess this up. And we just came up with this concept that first Christmas together of saying, um, hey, let's start gym coupons. Gym coupons. <laughs> this is before they called me. Dad. Is that what they were called originally? Gym day coupons. Gym day coupons. Jim made four coupons. Oh, wow. A piece of paper so, and, it, and he wrote on it, good for one Gym day. Yeah. And so, and that's that, that, that very that early on before they asked me to adopt them, before, you know, a lot of things. And before they called me dad. So it was about seven, six months into our, us knowing each other. So I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. And so they'd cash them in and we'd have these days. And as you know, you know, especially for my oldest, who's now, we were just out fishing with him this morning. He's laughing. 40 pound tunas and stuff and doing his thing. And, um, you know, he had really struggled, especially at a young age of things outside of Jamie's control. And, and that was tough, but, and, but he, he had a miraculous turnaround in that first year, you know, Brian, I always tell the story the, the year before we started these days together, he was, you know, close to failing the second grade. He was, having night terrors every night, which is an awful thing. Your kid wakes up screaming. He had been put on the spectrum for autism at school. You know, we were, we were there's some heavy things. And Brad, within that year, as you know, because you've known me over a decade now, we saw a shift and there were just these, these days of, of just distinction of spending one-on-one time were just shed away. And, you know, within a year, his night terrors were gone. They retracted the uh, diagnosis of autism. Um, he got the most improved student of the third grade. And that was just, this is where I started to tell the story. And I'm like, gosh, I just took the time to spend one day a quarter with this little boy who, 
you know, we got those results without medication um, and without therapy. And there's a time and a place for both of those. Absolutely. It, you know, and that might come later down, but, but that focused attention, I think, just made a difference that we started to share with others like you very vulnerably saying this is very uncomfortable to talk about, but it made a difference. Um, and this, this system of spending this day one-on-one -on -one every quarter with just a few principles lined up to support you is now being used. We've kind of calculated roughly, Brad, we think there's like over 300,000 families using this. So wow. one rhythm. Well I can tell you, and, and we'll recap it so that everybody listening here like has the playbook. And what I love, it's it's simple. Like you really can't screw it up. The only way you can screw it up is not put it on the calendar. That's right. the only way. Right. And yeah. um, and I was just out in Vegas. I don't think I told you this. So I was out in Vegas. For those listening in, Taylor Schulte, great advisor, um, has a really cool group, advisor growth community that he kind of oversees of 150 kind of independent financial advisors out there. And like, we'd like connected on Twitter, done a few like podcast things together, but I never actually met him in person. And um, so we connected out there and somehow his wife, actually his wife came up, she was out there with them as well. And we started talking about the family board meeting and she had just gone on a family board meeting that day with her kids. And what was funny, how we connected, he made a post on Twitter, this is years back and said, Hey, like this is, a real struggle of like the work-life balance. And I, I just feel like it was a very vulnerable post where he felt like he's just kind of not hitting the mark where he needed to be as a dad. I sent him your book, the family board meeting, and he immediately implemented the quarterly meetings. And he's like, dude, thank you so much. That changed the whole trajectory. His wife said, thank you. And now he's gifted it to a number, uh, of, you know, the advisor growth community. So it's like, it's like the gift that keeps on giving. It's like, it's, it's a book that multiplies. And I was just sharing before we went live here. One of the things I like to do, we're on video for those listening. There's, this is out on YouTube as well. I usually like to get a copy of the book and hold it up. So I was going to go grab a copy because we always keep some on hand. And so I went over to kind of the DBDL library and we're out because we just keep giving them away because everybody we every time i hear somebody that's struggling with that kind of balance i'm just like i've got the recipe i'm going to send it to you in the mail so it just it just um it just works that's that's the only way i can put it it just works and it's it's so simple you just have to do it and then i'll get off my soapbox here in a bit but you do the first one the parent doesn't have to request any from there on out because typically the kid my five, four and five-year-old, when I started, I'm like, we called them Daddy Braun days, Daddy Nash days. That was our version of it. And like, when's the next Daddy Braun day, Daddy Nash day, Daddy Nelly day? And they're like, they want them to be more frequent. So oftentimes we've done them, you know, more frequently than every quarter. So anyway, any other, um, what, what's like a favorite story or two with 300,000-ish families going through this of just like a before and after that was just transformational and any of them out there? Gosh, there's so many. There's a lot. I'm, I'm... Well, and what's interesting, I'll, I'll I'll tie it back a little bit to one something that you said a little bit ago that you would have been saddened if you found the book later and the children were grown. Mm -hmm. And we do hear that a lot when grandparents get a hold of it and they think, oh, but you know what's really cool? They then implement it with their grandchildren mm -hmm. or aunts that maybe don't have children of their own or uncles, but then they implement it with their nieces and nephews. I think the favorite you know, you, you hear all the like big transformation stories, but the parts that I love so much is when I hear it becoming like multi-generational or people who start after that 18th summer who realize, gosh, I can still make the most of the time that I have, even if they're not in the home. Well, I can return back to intentionality and connect with my children, my grandchildren, you know, and I think it's never too late to, to begin doing that. Yeah. I, for me, Brad, you know, speaking to you, there's so many that comes up, but I remember the one time you brought me in to speak and there was someone that you worked with and she was having a real struggle with their son. And they yeah. literally went home and the next day did a board meeting and there was like a transformational shift. They said they had both been busy out of the house. The dad had been away more than even her. I don't know if you remember that. And she sent me this line. I remember, I remember the exact I story. Exactly, yeah. I know exactly who it is. His, yeah. his, behavior changed in a day 
like in a day. Because they were hearing like daily daycare notes, right? And like there's a lot. I, I know exactly what you're talking and, about. And, and they I just think, if I remember right, their child was suffering from night terrors as well. Because I remember yeah. you told that story and she was like, us too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so but was, look how powerful that is that all three of us in this room, like that was years ago, like maybe five years ago, because it was pre-pandemic. Mm-hmm. And all this is how much family matters. And this is how much everybody that listens matters. And everybody that we wrote that book for matters. Like your kids matter. Like we're sitting here on a podcast saying, I remember her son. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I remember. Well, and, and I remember two, two I want to go over real quick. I remember there was someone in a mastermind group with us, Brad. He was getting divorced. His business had gone really bad. And he had two twin daughters. And he went, I mean, he was he was down. And he went on, he, he spent a day with each of them and he came back to me and he said, both of them said separately, like, we don't care about the business. We, we just want you. And that like, he says today that still changed how he, he rebuilt his business. He got remarried and was a much better husband. And like, but his daughters had that space to say, don't you realize we weren't wanting this big business or all these extras, we wanted you. And that's all we want. And that gave him, a second lease on how he was going to move forward. So that one always sticks with me. Um, and, and, and lastly, not to be self-serving here, but again, we probably doubted this thing more. This was just a simple thing. How do I stay in line? But we were just here in Costa Rica for our next book, working with one of our editors and they're interviewing our sons. And you know, the stories in the book, cause you've read it a few times. Our one son yep. who was afraid of heights. And I go up in the lighthouse and I tell the whole story of that day of the board meeting well, he now has a, a gutter cleaning business. And he's on, so he's on roofs every day. And I didn't put this together. I'm like, oh, yeah, wait a minute. And then Alden, you know, who really has overcome huge things and is doing great in pursuing his passions. Well, you know, he has his own charter fishing business. I mean, who would have thought 12 years ago spending a day fishing with, with you know, this little because that was his this passion early thing. on, yeah. was fishing. And, and now, he's, now, now he's got it. You know? Now he runs a charter fishing business and he got his captain's license at 18 years old, which is the earliest you can get, receive a captain's license. Yeah. So, so, it's so how they yeah. kind of like the path when you get to know them and, and, and you let them unfold during these days, you really get to see kind of like guideposts or little little um, breadcrumbs along the way of who they're becoming. And, or, or like the movie yeah. You're like, oh, that's how it was going to play out. That makes total sense now. Yeah, Who would have thought a decade ago, like, oh, yeah, spending these days, letting him go deep in his passion of fishing is actually going to get him in a direction of success and happiness. But it did, and it has. And uh, so that's, and we hear those stories more and more. Like, I, I got clear that they were really passionate about this, that they really cared about this, and I was able to support them in that. And that's a common theme in thousands that I've heard from, which is really, really inspiring. Yeah, and I'm testament to the work you all have done and how you've poured into the family. And I know, like, what I also love is the realness. You're like, we're very imperfect. We screw this up, and we all do. There, there's no perfect playbook to being a parent. Um, but I've met both of your sons. Uh, they, you brought the whole crew to South Carolina, uh, the bigs, the littles, as you call them. Yes. And um, I will tell you, um, you've raised – two uh great young men the yeah. type of the type of guys that look you in the eye give you a firm handshake don't shy away from an adult conversation and this was really cool like you talk about alden's uh, love for fishing my boys 13 well now 13 and 11 uh but about a year ago they're out on the dock and alden's over there teaching them how to fish wow. and just oh, like a big brother okay. and um I remember a concept, Jim, that I've borrowed from you. You call it the fun uncle concept. Yeah, yeah. And and I've experienced this where, you know, as a parent, obviously you want to mentor and pour into your kids. And it's like, hey, don't forget to use your manners. Don't forget to look people in the eye, shake their hand, all that. Which they're like, yeah, yeah, dad, I know you tell me all the time. But then Jim Shields or Jamie Shields shows up. I guess I should say the fun aunt or uncle. Mm-hmm. And um you can tell them the same thing. And now they're like, Oh, I really like that gym guy. And they actually listen to you. Yeah. They don't resist the message, you know, well, we and, use the whole time. we're not immune. So nothing drives our yeah, but, easier than when somebody thinks their dad is cool. 
Yeah, but they thought you were cool. Yeah, like, they think you're cool. When when you roused Elon for hard flexing with Tim Tebow in that picture, he still talks about it. He's like, Brad's funny. He's like, he caught me flexing. He called me out. So, um, <laughs> so. there it is. <laughs> hey, hey, Charlie, if you're listening, we need to throw that in the show notes. Let's find that picture. But for those that weren't there, so <laughs> we had Tim Tebow come out to that that founders retreat in South Carolina. And so everybody had a chance to, you know, do a meet and greet. And Leland works out like he gets after it and he's he's pretty well put together. Yeah. And he legitimately had a full flex where he was like flexing off versus Tim Tebow, which, by the way, I would not recommend for anybody. No. To no. Be <laughs> Leland, Leland has far less sense than he has hustle. <laughs> 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 His sense of humor so. is like com- comparable to none. Really. He has a good sense of humor. Uh, he he he's 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 a funny kid for sure. So, <laughs> so I, let's let's yeah, go ahead, Jim. Sorry, I was going to say, but the fun uncle funny. It's we have always tried to get our families involved in things like what we went to with the triad and you're like can you come up for the week and i was like yep i can because we just know whenever we go there you're going to get around value driven like-minded people similar core values that, people who that you're going to learn something and they and our kids just thrive from it and uh so kudos to you to having a community where you involve family because that's something we've always wanted to do if we can get our kids to meet people like you and others, well, then they're going to listen. They're going to spread their wings more. They're going to be they're going uh, to see what's possible. More open. Yeah. See what's possible. So yeah. higher caliber of, of people. Big part of sure. Well, our, our mission here at Triad is do business, do life. We want to do business with people we want to do life with. And for me and I mean, our community, that's, that's basically a core principle to many of them. I, I don't want to build a business and sacrifice my family. And that was one of the reasons Triad exists today is to build a model where that was possible. And so when we do the founders retreat, we're like, as an entrepreneur, you decide. Do you want it to be a business retreat? Come solo. Do you want it to be a couple's getaway? Great. Bring your significant other. For the vast, We had more children there. You were there than we did adults. And it was really cool. It was not like chaos where you know kids were running around like, wow, it was like they had some cool like, experiences we had kids club we had scavenger hunts and then we did business sessions and it just felt like a beautiful blend of of everything all there together it was, it was the best i've seen a, a, a family integrated event i mean that was yeah your team did a phenomenal job they did yeah, that, off. yeah that was very well done very and we've well. been to a lot <laughs> and we, we had a blast and our children had a blast yeah yeah that speaks volumes. so did so did we so did we well hey Come back, come back anytime. You just let me know. So, well, let's, um, I want to make sure we give the recipe yeah. for the actual family yeah, board. Meeting. So if, if they, what are, what are the bullet points to hit that basically we can say, this is a board meeting. So let's, let's put this right on the back of a napkin. It's that easy. So every quarter I have a, a each of us has a, a board meeting with each of our children. You know, what is a board meeting when triad leadership teams getting together, what do you do, Brad? Well, you uh, assess the last 90 days and then you look ahead to the next 90 days, right? You regroup the team and then you look ahead to the next 90 days. That's what I think in our entrepreneurial businesses, what a board meeting was about. And I thought when these two young boys came to my life, I said, I want to do that with them. Uh, they're, They're the most important investors and clients and team members in my life. So that's what we started to do. Every quarter, I'd have at least four hours, so at least a half a day with them, only following three guiding principles. That's it. And the first principle is the most important, one-on-one. One-on-one is the most overlooked strategy that could save so many marriages, so many families. If if people hear nothing, Brad, and you know I say this all the time, you got to get one-on-one. If you will separate the parts, you will strengthen the whole. You know, that that individual time is so important and so rarely happens. You know, like I joke all the time, you know, I come from an Irish Catholic family, which means I have like 4,000 cousins, you know, and that's great. But but it's the one on one time where you get below the surface, where you have the more meaningful conversations, where you're more present. You see something that might need to be discussed or something of 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 interest in and talent that you can help 
develop. Um, you know, one-on-one -on -one time is the best way to strengthen the family as a whole by doing it with each of the members. So every quarter I'm one-on-one -on -one with each of my children. On this day that I get one-on-one -on -one with them, I'm doing a tech fest. There is no electronics. I don't bring my phone. If you have a teen, they don't bring their phone. You know, we don't realize how much the devices can get between us. So I don't want them between us on these days because nothing says I, I don't respect you or prioritize you more than something else. Then you're in a conversation or playing with them and you stop and you take three texts or that quick phone call or look at the Facebook thread that you don't even need to read. Uh, so every quarter it's one-on-one -on -one and I'm doing a tech fest. The phones are off. There is no electronics. You've got to disconnect to reconnect. And the third thing is um, just go all in on what they're going to do. You know, I know from following you for years, you were not necessarily going from your football background, a Pokemon guy, uh, but you became a Pokemon guy uh, because, you know, it was a, it was a young interest of theirs and they wanted to have Pokemon day. So you go all in on what they do. They get to build the day. You know, people support what they help create. So we're always pointing our kids to what we think they might want to do. I let them design the day and go all in. And when you go all in, you know, it's called what we call fun activity with focus reflection. Fun activity with focus reflection is a big abbreviation of experiential education. And that gives you the chance to go deep with your child really get into the trenches with them. And what happens at the end of the day is something called decompression, you know, where you can discuss the day, you can have a little bit more of a step back to assess your overall relationship. And one of the best ways to keep moving it forward that I find happen, Brad, is a sincere apology um, or a genuine apology. And those are two things that our children are missing today, sincere compliments, genuine apologies. Um, because sometimes as busy entrepreneurs, advisors, we give ourselves immunity. You know, we steam all the over and we don't want to do that. Yeah. So, three steps. Three steps. One on one. One on one. Without electronics, fun activity. With focus reflection. That they choose. That's it. Every quarter, quarter in, quarter out, year after year. And now you're going on a decade almost now, Brad which is pretty exciting. It's amazing. And that's it's, it. it's magical. It, it's man, that sounds so simple. So if you're out there listening, you're like, that's it. That's it. Just do it and watch the magic happen. Um, you, you said a few things there. I want to go back to, um, I'll hit the last, well, on the tech fast, this is one thing. Um, it's an epidemic right now in our society. And all you have to do is go out to your next time you go out to eat as a family and just look around the restaurant and look at how many families are there physically, but not mentally. They're not checked in. And it's sad I, how it will play out. Maybe you all have studies you probably do with the work you do, but um, COVID did not help with the connection. Um, although everybody was there like kind of, you know, but I feel like there's more disconnect now than ever. Um, what does research show? I'm sure you have some statistics or two with electronic devices and quality time and connection, but how have you seen that get in the way? Because I think that is a really big, big thing going on right now. Absolutely. So uh, in the, was it the 50s or the 60s, this dinner time? We, we actually started 1960. 1960, the average family meal time was 90 minutes. And in recently, in recent years, about four years ago, the average time was 12 minutes. 12. Minutes. 12. 12. So from yeah. 90 minutes to 12 minutes. And the difference being one, I mean, everybody's running off to do something, you know, an email, a, a Twitter, a, you know, some other form of connection that's not there with the family. They're going, to, they're running to some device. But no longer is family participating in preparation of the meal. No longer is family sitting and discussing, well, hey, what went on with your day? Or, you know, a deeper discussion and decompression and then consuming a meal in a, in a manner in which is actually nourishing to your body where you're focused and you're taking your time. And, and it's just such a huge difference. And we kind of combined a couple of things because with this tech fasting, 
we had started in our family putting, it was two hours a day, no electronics. We just kind of picked like four to 6 p.m. or five to seven. And we just, we started that when the older boys were young teens because we were seeing there was just, the, their brain needed a decompression point of the day. And we wanted them to know a time in the day in which we were fully available. And we needed to know a time in the day in which they were were resting and, and you know, kind of recovering from the world, if you will. And although we had time constraints on their uh, devices, and even though there were parental controls and all of those things are great, but we all need a time of complete fasting and a moment in which we can rest and, and heal, honestly. And so we, during these two hours, we didn't sit around and like stare at each other. We didn't have to talk or play a game every day or whatever it may have been. We just knew that that was a family core value. The phones all kind of hung out in the same place. And we were usually doing something separate from one another, but, but we were kind of in that collective space of a pause. We then evolved that once we heard this dinner time gap that's happening and we moved it to cover, which I guess it kind of did before the hours in which we prep consume and clean up dinner. And so we started calling it the dinner time challenge. And we added into that our friend, Joey Coleman, mutual friend Joey Coleman. Yes. They, yeah. They came to visit us once and introduced us to this idea of best and weirdest. And so that's how we start conversation at our dinner table as we do. What was the best part of your day? And what was the weirdest part of your day? Now, since now we've heard variations of it becoming freakiest, funniest part of your day, uh, best, worst, weirdest, thorns and roses, you know, there's all sorts of things. You Whatever can gets the conversation. But us, it's have, have you heard of, have you heard of happy crappy? Yes. 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 Uh, <laughs> exactly. that's, our family's run with that one a bit. Yeah. I that's like that so one. Funny. And so we do that um, every night at dinner and it's just a great way because there's so much that you don't know that happens in your spouse or your child's day that comes up during best and weirdest. And oftentimes it just is a great way to start laughing as well. Yeah. On um, on birthdays, we we do big family dinners every Sunday, but on birthdays, and they're always on Sundays as well, we go around the table and you have to say the best and weirdest thing about the birthday person. And um, that is always a lot of fun too. <laughs> the, the goal here, Brad, is to get conversation going and distance from tech. Because like you said, you know, when we heard that everyone's rushing back to someone, something else, and it's normally a device what if we to try to communicate. That? Yeah. Yeah. What if we remove that? And the severity of that really came. Uh, we've had a, a gentleman on our podcast named uh, Dr. Uh, Kim John Payne. Um, Simplicity Parenting, incredible book. Uh, he has a huge following. He taught us a lot. He was uh, a, 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 a medic relief in the war-torn areas of Burma. You know, we're talking very highly militarized, dangerous areas, uh, just a lot of destruction. He was working with the children. He was trying to help the children there. He was a psychologist and helped them with PTSD. And this always stuck with me. And he was there for several years. He went back and he had a practice, I believe, in both Australia and the United States for children. And he had done all these studies on PTSD working through Burma. And he started to get confused and say, are my wires getting crossed? And he went deeper into this study with the children that he was working with. Who were presenting the same. Presenting the same um, symptoms, symptoms of PTSD that he dealt with with children in Burma. He said it was like identical. And the, the big aha that he was coming up with, the children that were showing these same signs of PTSD were on electronics a significantly over, an overstimulated life. They were overstimulated. So there was no okay. overstimulation, especially from electronics. And these children in first world safe countries were showing the same symptoms of PTSD as a, a child in Burma who was, you know, really had reason to be absolutely afraid and, and, and suffering PTSD. And electronics was a part of that as well as um, like overscheduling. Overscheduling. Like jumping too much into the day, not leaving space for decompression, um, communication, uh, regulation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what was the age ranges of these children just out of curiosity? Mm -hmm. was it, was it I want to say like eight to 12, six yeah. to 12, something like yeah, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I was at a comedy show in Chicago, second city. 
Have you all, have you all ever been kind of the improv comedy? Never, I've heard of it though, of course. It, great show. It was around the holidays and I remember a joke and it was this, this couple that was talking and this skit that they were doing. And they said, Hey honey, did, did we, did we get the babysitter? And they're like, Oh, I think, Oh no, it's right over there. Yeah. Yeah. The, the kids are with the iPad. <laughs> and of course, everybody, everybody laughs. And I'm like, you know, but there's so much, unfortunately, there's truth in that. And I, I mean, we've all been guilty, I think, of you, you have a crazy day. And then sometimes it's just easier to just be like, oh, okay, it's, let's just let them be on the iPad or the iPhone for an hour or two. But there, there's this stimulation, this constant stimulation. It, it, it'll be crazy how it plays out studies like what you're just talking about. Um, and I know like all the parents I know, they want to be the best version of a parent they can be. And we're all imperfect, but I, I just love that we're talking about it right now because you start, you have to start to assess it. And I love it. You like, you recognize, and I, by the way, I see it. I've got a 13 year old, all his buddies are on it. They're FaceTiming each other nonstop. And you, you kind of want to start to like create this space where it's like, okay, let's, let's like start to pull everything back here where we back to center where it needs to be. So any other um, frameworks or rhythms you all get in as a family that kind of go down that path where you've had success with that? I think, I think dinner time and, and these quarterly board meetings are, are super important when it's a day. Um, and also time for Jamie and I, as you got to experience, you know, date night is just monstrously important. It, it is so important to keep dating your spouse, to have that reconnection, love your kids, but man, do you need some space from them to just have the two of you? I mean, that is so necessary. So the rhythm of date night, I think is again, so overlooked and so misguided that uh, that is an easy one to get back into the rotation, which we can talk about. And we've been watching that you know, not only in our own relationship, make waves in a lot of other relationships. And it's so doable. It's so doable, especially if you follow the framework. Yeah. Well, the truth is if, if it's not okay between mom and dad, I, I've seen it. I, I can think of a real life story. Yeah. Great couple, um, incredible parents. And what I saw was just, and it's, this is easy to do. You have kids, you're running around the sports activities where the focus shifts from each other down to the children. And you're, you're basically roommates driving your kids around, you know, and I, I've seen a few relationships over the years where they were incredible parents, but they forgot to date, keep dating and, and loving each other. And then what happened? Divorce. And now how are the kids impacted with that? Where now here's this weekend with mom, this weekend with dad. And if, if you don't keep that relationship solid, and strong, then it, it cascades down to the kids, you know? So couldn't agree more with that thought process. Um, I think it's, a, it's important. It's a hard thing to say, and it's a hard thing for some people to hear, but, you know, the, the children know that our relationship will always come first. Like we are the primary and we were here first. And, and, you know, we kind of fall in line from there the same way that we also communicate with our children, you know, you're not rich your parents are rich, you know, like that same thing, like, it's not your money, it's our money. It's not, you know, we, yep. our relationship is, is first before our relationship with you. And just kind of, kind of laying that boundary and expectation out of like, this is really important, our self, you know, our regulation together. And then it, it makes us being loved and supported by such a strong partner makes us incredible parents. Like I, I think all the time, you know, he'll say all the time, gosh, our kids hit the, the mom jackpot. And, and I think, gosh, I, I couldn't be mom jackpot if I didn't have such a great support and father that loves to have fun and be silly. And then, you know, rub my feet at night when I'm exhausted, you know, this whole balance of like how much what? we care and support. Jim, you're making me look bad over here. I just made that up to make him look good. Oh, this okay. Is okay. Cool, cool. I'm talking yeah. about Brad. Brad, you've been around us enough to hear my bad jokes. Believe me, there's plenty <laughs> of deficit I have. So, but just starting with the primary, I think is really important. Yeah. So, if you want to yeah, talk, so let's yeah, let's 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 shift. Um, I'll, I'll close kind of we'll call it the family board meeting chapter. I want to I want to share something that was super meaningful to me, and I think what's really cool is once you get in this rhythm. Um, 
and, and I'll just say it one more time. I can think of a guy we both know. He was he was at like his second or third uh, front row dads retreat, and I remember what happened was there was a group that implemented the the concept the first time you spoke, and then it was like another session or two, and these were happening every six to twelve months. And there was this group, and this was all dads. They were like, "Oh yeah, I meant to do that. I had that in my notes, and I just yeah, I didn't get it done. Just put it on your calendar, like." Like a Saturday, four hours, it's not unattainable. And that one-on-one, at the moment you do it, it just unlocks this whole part of your child's personality that you didn't know that, I guess, assuming they have a sibling, I should say, that you didn't know existed. Yeah. Either way, I mean, yeah. because sometimes, especially for busy dads, normally it's the busy dad, right? It can go either way. But right. In- the son or daughter might feel closer to the mom and open up and talk to them more because they're more used to it. It it, give, it takes away that option to of have safety that safety or comfort. Yeah, or where it's just that magnifying glass of view. So right. That's a solid point because my daughter was attached to my wife's hip for like the first four years of her life. Yeah. And I remember when we did the first board meeting, it was a little hike. And all of a sudden she was just jabbering with me. And I'm like, this is magical. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's such, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, but let's, let's just go to where it's evolved. So I just did a coming of age trip. You brought up Pokemon. So my middle son, Nash, he's like, he could tell you every set, every character, the price, like he's, he's like a little encyclopedia of these things. And, um, so we just spent a few days out at the Dallas card show, which is the second largest card show in America, wow. like 700 tables. And so we just geeked out. There was no bedtime because he was with dad. So it's trade night till like midnight, one in the morning. And the last night, so we were there Thursday night, Friday night. This was Saturday night. We roll into the hotel room. I think it was 1 a.m. So sorry, Sarah, if you're listening. (laughs) But but we roll into the room and he had just like set up his own little, it was like a lemonade stand except for cards where he was doing these trades and making these deals with like 25 year olds. It was awesome. And um, so he crawls into bed. We're both tired. Lights are off. He's in one queen bed. I'm in the other. And he rolls over and he goes, I love you, dad. Unsolicited. I wasn't like, good night, buddy. He lit it. But I share that. And I, I, it's just like, it makes me want to cry, you know, tears of happiness because that space was created where he was seen. We were doing something he was really interested in. And that was love for him in his language. And that is where that bond deepens and connects. And because of that, that's why I say, get it on your calendar. Because once you do as a parent, it's like the most intoxicating, addicting drug as a parent, you know? And so, you know, I just wanted to share that story because it's like, like it's life-changing and I, I want people out there to hear it and run with it and implement it because once they do, they, they will never look back. Well, and then when they hear that from you, Brad, they know the authenticity they want that same situation the same way I want it and you wanted it. And you hit, hit the, the biggest plus and the biggest minus. How am I going to do this? It sounds so simple. Put it on your calendar. Why is the number one reason? The number one reason why this strategy fails, you don't put it schedule, on your calendar. Yeah. That which we schedule gets done. So you've hit the nail yeah. on the head saying this is how special it can be. And this is why it will work and why it won't. And I couldn't have said it better myself. And hey, as a dad, Jamie, you'll have to let me know if it works the same way with moms. The truth is us dads, we're just big kids. And so I had as much fun over those two or three days. I was right next to Nash. I'm doing my deals over here, right? (laughs) And I I, I think it's like also an opportunity as a dad. I get to relive a childhood. Mm -hmm. And like I get to be a kid again. And that's fun too as a 42-year-old, you know? So um, it, it's it's awesome on both fronts. Okay, well let's let's save some time because also your your date night um, framework is is magical. So I want to I want to uh, spend some time there. So I believe you call it date night with a question. Um, and I was going to ask this before, but we kind of went down the family board meeting. You had mentioned there was a couple at our DBDL founders retreat. Obviously, let's not unveil like identities or anything. But I'm curious, you said there was a couple there, like you still talk about what, what kind of went down or what, because I think that's a great lead into the power of this. That's good. So 
we had a couple that at the end, you know, honestly, like during the talk, you could read you can, that you body can, language. Yeah, you can and, read some, some happenings. And I could tell that there was a couple in the room that um, were there because they thought they should be there, maybe. Mm. Maybe mm. the best way to describe it. And at the end of it, one of them came up to me and was emotional and, and, and shared, you know, thank you so much. I, we really needed that. Um, and then like completely shared their heart of maybe what had been going on and the distance that had been created in their life and where they were trying to go, like how they were wanting to like save and repair this marriage, honestly. Mm. Um, and I remember one of them felt this way. The other one was standing there like, shut up now it's over let's go honestly was still the body mm. like, like i'm so over this shit i don't want to talk mm. you know what i mean i could that the, it was so hard and so hurt and so over it and the one partner though had been cracked and had been reached and was like wow i want this and and then the next day so fast forward the next, next day morning, the next, next morning, morning they both came up to us and they were both mm. emotional they both said we stayed up into the wee hours of the morning, talking about things and connecting in ways that we haven't in so long. You may have saved their marriage. Wow. And yeah, they said mm -hmm. the deepest the de like, and best conversation they had had in a decade. Yeah. And over a decade. And the spouse that was hardened was softened she was as well because he... I'm sorry, I'm giving well, he, away the she, she, you know. right. But the one spouse that had buy-in straight away, um, I, I guess the humility and the desire to help and to change and to work through it really showed up because then the other partner thought, okay, you're stepping in, I'll step in too. And, and then yeah. I, I don't know, I would be curious to hear, you know, if they kept up on their weekly date nights and how that's working for them. But I know that was a pivotal moment to where they they could take back their family and their marriage. Mm. That's awesome. I hadn't I hadn't heard that. So hey, that's why we brought you in. Like that right there, that story. Like yeah. that makes if it was just that couple, which by the way, it was a lot more couples than that that you all impacted. But um yeah, I'm gonna hit something and then we can come back to the the date night. Jim, you shared this one time. I don't know if it was a conversation or what, but it's this entrepreneurial lie. That's what I'll call it of I'm building this business for the family. Like I'm providing. Yep. And yes, there, there's an aspect of, of making a living to support, you know, the, the roof over your head and all of that. But the truth is there's a lot of spouses and kids that start to resent and hate the business because it steals the person that they love from the family. And what you just shared there, Jamie, like that's what it reminds me of. It's like, I don't want more money in the bank account. I don't want another car. I want you to be present and here. Yeah. And you all have seen that play out in a lot of different ways, but like what, what's the additional color commentary? Because I think that's the lie that specifically males, myself, I've fallen victim to that, that we yeah. live sometimes. Yeah, I like, like as well, because I would I would do that. I think, Brad, it's easier to be a good businessman than a good husband and father. And we bury ourselves in business sometimes, um, consciously or unconsciously, um, because it's too damn hard to be really good at home. And so we well, it think feels like it is. It feels like it is. And then we have yeah. this, this, well, we'll get back to them and they'll understand. And if I get this going here then all the other things will just fall into place anyway if we get the business from 2x to 7x right then it's going to be that's going to be the point where it's you know just euphoria and everything's fine and everyone understands and and that's just someday never comes you know someday i will be able to slow down and get to this you know it, you hear the steve jobs story i tell where you know steve jobs on his deathbed with walter isaacson his his um biographer was was doing final interviews to explain to his family why it wasn't always there for them. You know, this is a guy who had a huge following, murals and candlelight vigils from the business community when he died. Uh, but he, you know, he had a lot of regret and he talked about it with his biographer. And his biographer said to him, Steve, are you glad you had a family? 
and, and Steve Jobs, who had a reputation for not being a great guy, but I think we get clarity at, at the end of our life. And he was there and he said, man, it's 10,000 times better than anything I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And I think we don't, we keep lying to ourselves of, yes, we'll be able to slow down. Yes, once we get to this benchmark, but we keep moving the goalposts um, or we keep putting more of a deficit. Well, where do we borrow this time from or this effort or this focus? Oh, we'll take it off of spouse time or children time. You know, we're, we're our, 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 our you children. bargain that it's OK because you're providing something else. Yes. Like, oh, well, exactly. they they get to go to the best schools or, oh, well, she gets to drive a nice car or whatever it may be. Um, but you the know, connection is the connection is, is, lost. is very very dead. And one thing, you know, we've had our ghostwriter here in town. We are publishing the third edition of the family board meeting next week. And we have a book coming out at the end of the year as well. And um, we were working together. And one of the questions he asked us this week was, do you have, do you know when it's enough? Like money, he was talking to us about money. Like when, when, like, what is your number or what is your, you know, what is, what is your end game? Like you guys, work hard and you strive hard and you, you, you know, are doing it in what is what his thing was, what or how much. And Jim and I, at the same time, we said, gosh, there's not a number. There's a how am I still doing date night with my wife? Am I still connecting with my children? Can I still cut out to go grab an acai bowl on a four wheeler with the kids before they go to, to, to camp? Am I, am I showing up at all of the dance recitals and baseball games and do you know what I mean it's that that is our mm -hmm. that, do, I have that's, time to do do podcast interviews with friends like there it's the how you know are we still getting to work out are we still getting yeah. like true. all we'll of the our things habits. it's not about how much money we can make it's about how you're making it. yes and the impact that we're making along the way first in our own family, but then exponentially, how can we serve? And if, if we bottom out in those parts that matter to us, if we bottom out in our family, then, then it, we, we actually, um, we lose, we absolutely lose, but we even have, we've done a practice. We do this about once a year and forgive me, but it's called the, the, um, fuck it list. And this is what we do when we decide, okay, so if it gets to be too much and we say, fuck it, how, what can we do with, with, with our streams of income? Because if we say we just want to be done with work tomorrow and only play for the rest of our lives, what does that look like? And that's a practice that we have in our life because never will scaling come before the foundation of our marriage and our family and our friendships. Sounds like a perfect conversation for a podcast called Do Business, Do Life. I mean, we should probably flip that though. It should be do life, do business. We probably got it out of order. But um, well, there, there's, you take, it's one of the things we coach on, which by the way, you're hitting something. I mean, I was, I feel really fortunate. I got into finance at the age of 26 and most of my clients were almost twice my age, you know, forties, fifties, sixties. And I remember having, when Sarah and I had our first child universally, don't take this for granted. It goes so fast be present, be there for the stuff that matters. And I, I was at least aware enough in that moment to listen. And I didn't do it perfect, but I was really fortunate because I had people 10, 20, 30 years further down the road than I was. And there were some of them that had those regrets. And that's the saddest thing in life is to have regrets where it's like, I missed my kids' high school days because I was busy building a business. And what you just hit is something we coach on a lot um, because business creates redline behavior. I think we have a mutual friend in Simon Bowen. You oh yeah, from Australia. Yep. You remember? You remember his futures model: redline, green line behavior. So the redline behavior is just build a business and burn yourself out, like kind of what you're talking about, Jamie. Just you know, do all the stuff you didn't just mention and do business first. And then green line behavior is it's kind of Covey's seven habits. Start with the end in mind and retrofit your schedule. And we call it big rocks on our Johnson family calendar. Yeah. The yeah. pillars of the stuff that matters, the family trips, the vacations, the, the, the kids' sports. And then you retrofit everything else. And granted, sometimes business things, you do have to do a trade-off. None of it's perfect. But no. at least if you start with the intention first of what is the higher priority, because what I've seen is I've seen a lot of business owners and advisors flip that where 
we just had a coaching call the other day and this guy with the young family and he's like, I'm missing my kids sports. I'm missing their games. And guess what? All the money in the world can't buy that back five years from now. Just not possible. So I love that mindset. It aligns 100% with what we talk about at triad. And um, with that, we better, um, we've, our time is limited. So we, we never have enough time. Let's, let's just say with dating your spouse should never end. And when it doesn't end, man, thing is, we just look so forward to that. Just like our kids do, uh, you were saying your son marks off the dates. Man, Brad, Wednesday's 5.30 to 8.30. I'm like giddy. I'm like, yes, it's hump day. We're going on a date. And it's almost like a board meeting, you know? Uh, it's just the two of us. My phone is not invited. And we plan something. And there's great conversation. We do it the same bat time, same bat channel. This is the biggest hack for all of your financial advisor buddies or any of us. In buddies. fact, while we've been on, I was having a hard time clearing date night popping date up. Date night from the popping up on our screen. Am I getting into date? Am I getting into date? No, no, no. We're in Costa Rica time, Brad. Time, okay, time. okay, okay, okay. And, so in in so. Florida, it is date night right now, but not not in Costa Rica. Not yet. Not in Costa Rica. Okay, cool. So we choose the same day, same time every week. That way, you can get sitters on on a permanent rotation. You're not trying to squeeze it in like, well, how about Friday next week? No, I can't. Or how about Tuesday? I don't take calls or I barely ever travel on a Wednesday. Like we just have it down. And the, the hack of hacks, Brad, and I hate the word hacks, but this really is. We set all that in place. And then we are not allowed to go there and say, how was the kid's school today? Oh, wow. The weather's getting warmer because it's summer. You know, all those drab, boring, non-Casanova romantic questions. We have a deck of cards that we design and then we create new ones once we've gone through it. And one or two questions we ask per date, something deep and below the surface that's not surface level, that gets you to know your spouse better, date them. I mean, you saw it. You know, there were people when we chose a question out of our deck and went around and had the conversation, there were people 25 years married. They didn't, didn't know this about each other. Yeah. And I just get so excited when I'm doing one or two questions a week through a whole year, how better I know Jamie, how much I can support her, fall in love with her more. And that's the hack of our day and night. We do it the same time every, every week. We bring one or two powerful questions, and that's what we focus on instead of what are the errands we're going to run tomorrow or what was the kids' grades at school. That stuff can wait. This is about us. Yeah. And to be honest, you know, Brad, because you love us because we're real, like sometimes we will have a little tension through the day, or maybe there's something we've been trying to work out for for a couple of days, and, and maybe I don't really feel like going on a date. I don't think Jim ever feels this way, but um <laughs> sometimes yeah. sometimes I feel that way. I'm like, I roll, I gotta go get all pretty for this guy that's getting on my nerves. But I will tell you, within just the very first few minutes of the date, maybe 30 minutes, like he reaches over and he grabs my hand or he opens the door or we he asks me some question that I thought there's no way he noted. How did he even notice that? Or how did he know this has been on my heart? And it totally re-softens me again. And I'm reminded every single time we go on a date, I'm like, this is why this guy's here. You know, even in those mm-hmm. moments in which you feel like, mm, maybe I'd rather not show up. The fact that you have it scheduled and you have a rhythm, you do show up. And when you're sh- showing up is half the battle, right? And then, and then it just goes from there. It's like going to the gym. It's like, yeah. just show up. And it's amazing. Work gets done, right? Uh, I, I want to hit. I want to hit one thing you shared. It, it's funny. It's just like the board meeting stuff. Same thing. S- Sarah and I have gone through these rhythms of like I. I forget it was. It was advice given to us by somebody. I was like a family friend that had been married fifty plus years, and he's just like date night once a week. There's wisdom in that, right? And I remember with travel and work, we were like, oh, we can't do it Thursday. Oh, we can't do it. But to your point, if you have a set night that is your night, okay, so it works four out of five weeks, and now that fifth week you're traveling for something. Okay, well, it's easier to reschedule and move that one week than every single week to constantly be looking at the calendar, trying to sort things out. So I love that, that it's the same time every week. It's that rhythm you're talking about where you can just depend on it. And then when it does have to move, okay, you move to one week, not every week is a new week sort of deal. So I'm, a, I'm assuming you all have dealt with that as well. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very much. It also gives the children an expectation because now they know which day, which night's date night. And so they have something to look forward to. They have a sitter, they get pizza, they get a show, you know, because we, it's special to them too. Like, I really am excited that our children are going to grow up and know that they too need to have a date night. A week. Like they're, they're going to know yeah. like, I want a man for my daughter, daughters now that show what is so excited to show up and and yeah. go on a date with them or i want my sons to, sons to, to date to do that yeah. their spouse you know i just think it's it's just such a tone to set such an example to lead by too yeah well well one thing on the question because i remember the exact question so the, when we did the date night in south carolina the question was the teacher mentor coach that had the biggest impact on your life and sarah and i had been married 17 years at that point learned something new that night about my wife and she learned something new about me. And it was cool because there was 25 couples around that table. And I'm just looking around and serving because, you know, we're hosting an experience. I want to make sure this is sitting home and just the conversation. And you could tell, you can tell when people are surface level and you can tell when they're deep. And these were deep conversations going on all the way around the table. So I love the intentionality. Um, You're reminding me, we need to bust that deck back out and sitting at the house. So thanks for the reminder. And you hit one other thing that night as, as we're getting towards the end here, I would love for you to share. You shared, and you said this a little earlier, um, there is a framework that you walk through that is a, I think you called it a, a sincere compliment, which basically how you compliment another individual. Is that what you call it or am I butchering that? Yeah, no, no, you're, it's, yeah, it was actually designed by Patrick Lencioni, the famous business author. But he used it for a second. compliment or a sincere apology. Yeah. Yeah. So we call it an SBI specific situation behavior intention so i can say in in it, it's because if you say hey brad you're funny right it's your child or your wife they're kind of like ah bs but when you tie it to something specific i made you feel and what it inspired you to do that's what we talk about giving a sincere uh, appreciation we call it the, the sbi um, and that's something I forgot we went through with you that night. Of authentic gratitude. But those are three pieces. And I can explain it real quick if you want. Yeah, I mean, if I'll start your date night off, right? If you don't mind, like if you want to share an example with Jamie, um, I think what, because obviously I'm, I'm in a business of relationships. There, there's obviously when you, when you express gratitude to another human, that always deepens the connection. But the the intentionality, like the way you framed it, it's like you can't BS your way through it to your point. So if you yeah. wouldn't mind just kind of like sharing an example and then kind of deconstructing it, that I think there's a lot that, by the way, this, this works in marriages, relationships with kids. It also works mm-hmm. in business. Patrick Lencioni is an incredible business author. So yeah. um, I think there's a lot of applications for it. So this is me giving Jamie. So I could say to Jamie, you're, you're such a good mom. And that, that has some merit to it, but not as much as to say, gosh, sweetheart, every time I see you with the kids, it's just so incredible. But the other day when you were on the four-wheeler with Maggie at your back and Gloria in the, in the holder and you're smiling and driving uh, with them and they're both waving at me, you know, it just... It made me feel so excited and proud to be your husband. And what that inspired me to do is not to be uptight, like, hey, she's got two kids on her, on the four wheel, they're going, no problem. Maybe I need to loosen up. Mm -hmm. So thank you. So, right there, you know, I, and that's a real example. We're always on four wheelers down here in Costa Rica. She's got one kid in the back and one in the front and she's riding all relaxed. You know, I would have been the more nervous Nelly and I could say, you're such a good mom. She's like, well, why? Well, the specific situation here, she is riding a four wheeler, like a champion. How did it make me feel like looking over? I just felt so proud and excited to be married to her. So she knows she brings that out in me and what it inspired me to do moving forward with my own life, relax, enjoy you know, be more present. Um, And so that's the difference between saying, gosh, you're a good mom. Mm -hmm. Um, Clarity and specificness is really powerful. So uh, thank you, Jim. And Jamie, I've got to ask you now, 
you know the framework, you know the playbook. Does it matter? Like I, I felt that on my side and I'm not, you know, that was between the two of you. Like how did that feel to receive that on your side? Oh my God. It's, it's so powerful every time. And I think um, one thing that I've learned to appreciate, I think sometimes people think because you schedule it, it loses its magic or because you follow a framework, it loses its mm. magic. Oh, well, if he has to schedule it, then he doesn't want to do it. Oh, if he has to figure out the three steps to it, he doesn't mean it. It's quite the opposite. It really gives you a framework to then relax into. So the, you know, for Jim to think, okay, so I, I'll share with her a specific thing and then how it made me like, wow, that's magical because I think he took the the time to put it into those things and he, he immediately had something that he thought of. But I mean, I'm super lucky and and we he does often you know, compliment and apologize. And it's something just like any other intentionality. The more you do something, the more you do something and it never loses its power. Just like every single date night. I, I almost think it's, more, I get more excited doing it weekly than, than when we used to do it once a month or when, you know, it, it just is something that I, there's an expectation to live up to, I think, you know, and so when he's giving these sincere compliments or genuine apologies, I just think, gosh, I, that makes me want to keep being that good. Yeah. What, what, one of my mentors told me, show your work. Mm -hmm. Like when you, like, whether it's in a relationship, business partnership, whatever, oftentimes we think people can read our minds. And what I just saw happen, there's Jim showed his work because you're probably sitting there just riding the four wheeler around, you know, hanging with the kids. And he kind of lets you into his world of how he experienced that through his eyes and how that impacted him. That's really powerful when you can let somebody else in on your world. So thanks for, I've completely put you on the spot and you crushed that. So <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, so, Hey, that's a good, good start to date night. But um, well, with that, I, I don't want to take you too much longer. Um, I, I just always, I, I love the conversations we have. I always have high expectations and then you just blow them out of the water. So, and Jamie, it was fun to have you on. I love the female perspective. Um, I need to get more of that. There's a lot of middle-aged white dudes in finance. So we're, I, I love that you brought that perspective to, uh, to the show. So um, I just want to say thank you. Thanks for the impact you've had on the Johnson family. Thanks for the impact you've had on our triad partners community. And uh, if you all will, will come back, we'll have you back anytime. I just love to have you in our community and, and just hang with you and connect and do business and do life. So um, with that, I'm just going to close with one last question. Um, you experience South Carolina. Um, our mission here is to help our team and our triad members do business and do life. So I'm curious, what is your definition? And free, feel free to have your own independent definition of if you were to, to define what do business, do life means to you, how would you put that into words? So I'm going to jump and use our favorite vocabulary, integration. I'm going to steal your answer. <laughs> um, <I'm laughs> into integrating one into the other. So for for me, I I don't ever want business to become so big that it leaves a shadow on my family, you know. And 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 likewise, I I do know how important business is to provide that epic, legendary life for my family. So I think the integration of doing life and doing business together it's just a really beautiful kind of weaving you know we get to be here together right before we got on the podcast with you we were out fishing with our big boys this morning when we when we close this computer I'll be picking up the two little ones and dropping them off at boxing and then I'll be nice popping off a couple of, of emails in between there and then do you know what I mean and so it's just this constant dance of like top priorities and always being available for the magic moments while also providing the funding for them, I guess that integration is huge. Yeah, really great. And, uh, and just the how, that was a big thing for us. How are we getting there? When's enough enough? Well, I'll keep making money and keep doing business as long as I, I can take a week to go hang out at the triad events, mm -hmm. or I can be in Costa Rica, or I can give to these causes that I care about, or I can write a, it, it's, it's the how. If I'm, if I'm enjoying it and I'm still integrating those things, then I want to still be working and creating and, and 
and doing new things in, in entrepreneurship, but but that it's the how. If I'm doing it where I'm burning the midnight oil, I don't see my family, I'm miserable, my health's going to hell, I'm developing a bad drinking habit just to deal with the stress, like no thanks. So the how, it's the how, Brad, it's, it's how am I doing it? And that's going to be the determinant. I love that. Well, I think that's great advice to end this conversation with. Um, enjoy date night. Enjoy Costa Rica. Thank you so much for carving out some time to share here with the triad community, the, the DBDL uh, audience and listenership. So uh, until us. next time. Yeah, yeah we love you. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. us. We love seeing you too. Yeah. Tell the family hi. Right. I will tell, tell that son with the massive biceps. Hello. <laughs> Francis, all right. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, hey, until next time. We'll see you. Thanks, Brad.